got to the double doors, there was a slight pause and then the doors electronically opened and he rushed on through. And then at that point, uh, although I wanted to keep going to the, the waiting room or try to find it, it was as though I wasn't in control of where my, my, my consciousness was going anymore. And it, it was as though I was being pulled upward and I was pulled up through the ceiling of, of the floor and then up to another floor and through that ceiling until I went out the entire roof of the hospital and was out outside and then began moving laterally instead of up. I started moving horizontally and was being pulled toward the city of Anchorage itself because the hospital was like on the outskirts of the city. And I was pulled over the city and the city sits on, on a, a bay or an inlet. And as soon as I was at the area where I should be going out over water, this dark um, cave-like tunnel opened up and I was pulled inside that. And once I was inside that, it was all dark except for very far in the distance, there was this tiny pinprick of light. And as I got into this, this tunnel area, my speed picked up tremendously. I was going so much faster than I had been just going over the city. Um, and as I was going extremely fast, this light was getting bigger and bigger as I was coming closer to it. And as I reached you know, at the end of this area and the brightness was so extreme, I burst into the brightness and the light. And then I felt this tremendous sense where I had been feeling kind of calm before and just disinterested, except for wanting to get to my husband. Once I burst into this light, I felt this enormous peace and love and just unbelievable, un indescribable emotions of, of acceptance and warmth and being home. Um, don't know how else to, to describe it. But I, I tried to, to figure out where I was because it was a location where the ground was all like brown and rocky, very arid, almost desert-like. And and that confused me. I couldn't figure out, well, where am I? If I'm, if I'm dead, shouldn't I be in heaven? And shouldn't I be, um, you know, someplace that's not brown and rocky? And, yeah. and so I, I looked down to where I thought my feet should be, because I still felt like I was inside a body of some kind, but I couldn't see any feet. I couldn't see any body parts at all. And at that point, another telepathic voice spoke to me and it said, follow me. And the voice was off to my left. And so it drew my attention to the, the left. And there was a man who was off to the left, climbing up a slope up out of this area that I was down in. And as soon as he said, follow me, I was just a matter of a few feet behind him. And so I looked him all over his back and and he had like this mid thigh length toga type garment off white type of a garment and um, he had very black dark hair that was pulled back and tied with a, a piece of leather um, and a, a just a simple leather belt around his waist and his legs he had sandals but they weren't like regular sandals they had strips of leather that crisscrossed and tied up and up his legs and were tied off just below the knees. So I'm looking at all of this about him as I'm following, as we're going up. And I'm, my first thought was, well, this isn't Jesus. Um, and I expected if I was dead, that I was going to be seeing Jesus, be with Jesus. And yet I knew in my heart that whoever this was, it wasn't Jesus. And, um, and I felt like I should know him and, and that he cared about me, but I'd had no idea who is it, you know, because it isn't Jesus. So as he, as I followed him, we went up over the top of this 
incline slope and came out into a totally different landscape. And this landscape was lush and green and filled with um, meadow of, of all different types of flowers that I, with colors that you can't even begin to describe and trees and, and the grass and the trees and the leaves and the flowers, everything had light from within it as though they were all alive and glowing from within. Um, it fascinated me and, and he had gone on ahead. My, I began to call him my guide. And so he, by this time was quite a ways ahead and he again said, follow me. And I was immediately right up and behind him again. And at this point, he was literally on the bank of a river. And the river itself, the, the first thing that popped into my mind is this is, this is the, the water of life. This is the living waters. And it sparkled and gleamed and seemed as alive as everything else. And then I realized that on the opposite bank of this river, um, I saw all of my deceased relatives, my dad who had died when I was seven and my brother who was in a car accident and been killed and different aunts and uncles. And then four other people that were there that I had never, I didn't really realize or remember who they were. And suddenly it just, it dawned on me that these people were, those four were my four grandparents who had all died before I was born. And yet they were all there together. And they, and I was feeling this enormous love from them. And they were, it was like a huge 